Good afternoon all. I trust everyone is safe and well and welcome to today's Open Classroom Civil Designer webinar. Today we welcome back Christopher Smith as your Civil Designer Software Facilitator who will be covering the Stormwater module. As always, feel, please feel free to use the text chat service on your GoToWebinar floating dialog to ask us any questions you may have during Chris's presentation. So without further delay, Chris, please take it away. Thanks, Charles, and welcome everybody to this webinar where we'll be looking at the stormwater. We'll be looking at creating a stormwater um, from CAD. We'll also be looking at creating a stormwater catch pit, and then we'll be touching on the stormwater color schemes. Let's go ahead and have a look at this. Here you can see I've got a drawing, which is my project, and it will bind all the other files to it. And then I'm also starting off with a pre-created DT8 file, which is my digital terrain model. Learning how to create these files will be easily found on our self-learning page. I'm going to go ahead and open this file. Here you can see I've got the cadastral boundaries for my project. I'm going to bring in the DTM, so we'll go to any one of the design modes and we'll go to File, Project Settings, and I'm going to select the Digital Terrain file. Let's go and have a look at bringing in the shading. So I would like to see the height shading for this terrain. You can always auto scale that. So here you can see we've got the high parts of the town on the edges flowing towards the river. And you can see that the river runs from this direction into this direction. We've also got some pans and we've got a little swamp area along here. So we'll drain to these areas in this location and we'll drain to this pan which will then feed into the river. Just to save time I've pre-created some CAD entities which we will import into the stormwater mode a little bit later in this demo. I first want to touch on some of the items and how to help you when you're creating your CAD entities. So let's quickly have a look at that. I'm going to right click over here and I'm going to go and switch on my CAD of my storm links and my CAD of my storm outfalls. Now this is for you to create, um, you need to create a CAD layer for your links and for your stormwater outfalls. These would be CAD lines and these would be CAD circles. Let's go and have a look. If I zoom in here, you can see I've got my CAD lines and I've got a CAD circle. So this CAD circle is sitting in the CAD of the stormwater outlets. I'm going to switch over to the CAD mode. I'd like to do some geometry parallel offsets. And for this instance, I'm going to use two meters away from the boundaries. You can see we've got a line at this location and we'll put one at this location. Now I know that I only want the pipes to be 80 meters long because most municipalities are only able to clean up to 90 meters. The cleaning rods are only 90 meters long. So 80 meters is what we normally aim for in pipe length. I know that I'll be starting at this location here and I'll be ending at this location over here. So the easiest way to do that is to go to geometry circles and draw center diameter. I'll change that to 80 meters radius, change it to radius and you click on the green tick. I now want to snap to that location there so I'll use the 3D in apparent 3D snap and I'll snap to that location so I know that radius is 80 meters and then I will use the geometry snap and snap to this location here this location here and this location here great so now we have the three locations that we want now we want to draw in the item. So we might need to change this to be the storm links because that's the layer we want to save. We also want to draw using the bilayer color or pen. We want to change this to be a line style and weight of bilayer. So that it's all a global setting within the layers. I can now draw it and I'm going to use the draw chain line. 
I'll then select and snap to these edges. Let's go and delete all the geometry lines now. And you'll see that you're left with 80 meter long segments. I purposely made this issue so that we can just quickly discuss it. This line will not terminate onto this network because this CAD line is going straight through. You'd need to either make a break in the pipe here by going to geometry and dividing the line. But I think it would be quite messy to have two manholes right next to each other. So I would pick up these two, hover my mouse and choose to snap. Let me use the end point snap and snap to the end here. Now you have three CAD lines terminating and we know that that's the drainage so they will drain in that direction. Now we need to create a stormwater database. We do this by making sure that we change from CAD mode to one of the design modes. Let's go to stormwater. Then we go to file, project settings. I can create a stormwater file. We can call that we can call that urban storm. Great. Now what we can do is convert this into a stormwater model. But before we do that, we need to tell Civil Designer what type of pipes we want to use, what type of manhole infrastructure do we want to use when converting it from CAD to a 3D model. So to do that, we can go to Edit, Default Settings. And we can say that we'd like the manhole type to be a precast round. We'd like the condition to be dropped. That's fine. We can choose our pipe type. So we can choose the 100D. But then it shows your diameter. We can choose it to be zero or we can choose different sizes of pipe. If you choose the zero, that will be automatic sizing based on your analysis. So it'll come in at diameter zero, but once you've run your analysis, it's going to change to the pipe size that you want. If you go and choose a pipe size, it's going to be fixed and your capacities won't adjust them. You can choose your bedding class, your number of pipes parallel, the minimum cover. That's an important step to do now. Uh, we'll do that at one meter and then we will leave the fixed slope and there's not going to be any raising of the terrain later on, so we'll keep your the free board at zero. Great, now that that's all set up, we can now import our CAD entities. Remember, we've got CAD lines it's sitting in its own CAD layer. And we've also got our outlets in its own CAD layer. You need to specify for each subnetwork where it drains to, and that is why we have the CAD layer. We can now import from the CAD into the sewer model. Let's go to File, Import, Convert Drawing Entities. You'll notice that the outfall is important to bring in, and you'll notice that the links is also. If we chose the links and we said OK, an error message would come up to tell us that we need the outfalls and the links. So that is the bare minimum of information that you require. So here we've specified the links, and we're going to specify the outfalls. Node names, node inverts and diameters are really up to you. They need to be in a text layer for each type. So all your node names need to sit in its own CAD layer and it needs to be near in the facility of the CAD manholes. The diameters need to sit in its own CAD layer and near the facility of the center of the pipe's length. The inverts and diameters are really for importing of as-built information into the Civil Designer Store model. Great, so now that it's imported, we can go and have a look at how it came through. Here you can see See, everything is graphically marked, so we'll just quickly clear that. And we can also switch off 
we can make layer zero our current layer again. And I'm going to turn off the CAD of the storm and the CAD of the storm outfalls as well. Okay, so you can see each CAD line where it terminated created a manhole. Great, so if we look at the catchment areas that we want to create now, let's go ahead and create this catchment area over here. So I'll go and say graphical add subcatchment. I'll give it um, a name, stormwater catchment area one. And I will specify now, just to save time, I'm gonna quickly just do this quickly. You are more than welcome to be a little bit more accurate than me. It also depends on boundary walls. That's why it's not an automated thing because we don't know where the boundary walls will be affecting and creating their own sort of unnatural watershed. Once you've created your catchment area, you can say close catchment. You then need to select the node that it must drain to. So we'll select this node here. It will confirm that you say yes. And then you must choose your paved area. So I'll choose to pave this area along here. And I will say end grassed or start grassed area. I accept that one. Accept the length and the slope and the manning factor. And now I start working on the grassed area. Depending on what analysis you're using, whether you're using um, Eludas, Store, or Swim, or Rational, you're going to be asked different questions. When I'm done, I say end my drainage path and I accept it. I then accept the values. And then I can choose my depression for. For the paved area, I'll choose that to be three millimeters, and in the grassed area, I'll choose that to be seven. Now that's completely up to you. You must also choose your soil types. You can also change these figures if you want to, and you can always come back to it. Remember that this is the subcatchment data for this subcatchment, so you can always come and re-edit this information. And we're draining to this node. See, this is also able to update, and you've also got your hectares. That's quite a large site. We can then say OK, and we can close that. And then we can say OK. I pressed escape because I don't want to draw any more subcatchment areas. Great, so that is how you would do the two items. I want to cross over to a project that's completed so that we can chat about the color schemes. I'll close this project like this and say, do you want to save? I don't need to save it for now. And I'll go and say file open and I will go to my completed project. Here you can see we've got a completed project and we can have a look at the color schemes now. So if we go to our, we can show the subcatchments. We can then go to our subcatchments and we can choose to have it as a transparent fill. We can then choose the color scheme for the subcatchments and on this you can choose whether you want the subcatchment size, length, slope and width. So let's choose the area of the size. And we can also do the color ramp in this case. And we can say, okay, well that color ramp, I just want to change the side to be blue. So we can see small to large. And here you can see your different sizes of catchment areas for the different sub catchments. We change that back to defaults. In fact, we can actually switch that off for now. And we go to our links. 
we can then choose to show our color scheme for our links that can be based on size, capacity, slope, flow rate, actual velocity, full ball velocity, depth of flow, and link type. So let's choose size, and you can see your different pipe sizes. You could go ahead and individually change the colors if you wanted to as well. So here you can see the different color schemes for the different size pipes coming through. Thanks very much for your time today, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Please leave comments in the comments bar, letting us know if you have any questions or any sort of uh, requests on videos you'd like to see in the future. Please let us know. Back to you, Charles. Thank you, Chris, and thank you to all who attended today. Please remember to renew your work from home licenses and follow the Civil Designer Software page on LinkedIn. See you all on Tuesday at the same time and same place using the same link for the Survey and Terrain class. Thank you, have a great long weekend, and goodbye.